Hello everybody. In this video, I would like to talk to you about exponential smoothing. So uh, the first type of exponential smoothing we're going to look at is simple exponential smoothing. Simple exponential smoothing is appropriate when there is a constant level with just random fluctuations. So you should not use simple exponential smoothing uh, when there is trend or seasonality in the time series. So last time we have talked about the uh, naive method, the simple moving average and weighted moving average. And now the simple uh, exponential smoothing is the last forecasting technique that's appropriate for when there's a constant level with no trend and uh, seasonality. Compared to the moving average techniques, uh, there are some differences between moving average and exponential smoothing techniques. First, uh, the moving average techniques do not hold on to the past. So what does that mean? What that means is that when you have an extreme outlier observation, that's going to affect your forecast. However, since the moving average techniques, uh, like the, the average moves, eventually that data point will uh, um, exit the average and eventually it's, it's going to stop uh, hurting your forecast accuracy. So that's what I mean by uh, moving average techniques do not hold on to the past. However, another important uh, thing to remember is uh, a moving average never learns from its past. What do I mean by this? I just mean that uh, when you generate forecasts with uh, a moving average technique, simple moving average or weighted moving average, you will also have some forecast errors, larger or smaller forecast errors. But the forecasts never take into account previous forecast errors. Okay. Now, exponential smoothing uh, learns from the past. What do I mean by that? In exponential smoothing, uh, each forecast has a correction factor based on the previous forecast error. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move on to the next slide and look at the formulas. So this is the formula for simple uh, exponential smoothing. Um, actually, there are two formulas um, which are equally valid and which will give uh, you the same exact forecast. However, um, I like the uh, highlighted formula where Ft plus 1 equals Ft. Okay, So that means every forecast is based on the previous forecast. Okay. So, uh, for example, F5 will be based on F4, F6 will be based on uh, F5, F7 will be based on F6, etc. However, we don't stop there. So, Ft plus 1 equals Ft plus uh, we add a correction factor. So, uh, in, in the parentheses here, we have dt minus Ft. So uh, we're basing our forecast on Ft, and dt minus Ft is the forecast error associated with Ft. So, for example, uh, let me uh, look at this. So here, what we have is uh, dt minus Ft is the error term associated with the previous forecast and we multiply that with alpha and alpha is called the smoothing factor okay or smoothing constant now alpha 
uh, basically determines how much or how little you correct your forecast. Alpha uh, can vary between uh, 0 and 1. And um, let me highlight it here. So alpha can vary between 0 and 1. And the closer it's to 1, the more your forecast will be corrected. And the closer to zero is alpha, the less the forecast will be corrected. So in the next slide, um, I talk a little bit about each formula there. Exactly the same thing. Uh, you can use whichever formula you prefer. Um, so let's do an example here. Uh, so um, uh, again, we have uh, our periods t equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. We have the actual demand. Uh, we have the forecast and the forecast error. So for simplicity, let's say alpha equals 0.5. So I have chosen alpha because uh, to be 0.5, so it's easy to calculate. I don't have any other uh, particular reason for it. And you can choose any alpha between 0 and 1. Then what we have is the first forecast. In simple exponential smoothing, you have to have an initial value an initial forecast, okay? So in this particular case, uh, let's say F1 is 2000, a nice round number. Uh, again, I just wanted to have a value that's easier to work with, okay? No other particular reason. So then, uh, so we have the uh, actual demand, DT, is 1600. Uh, the forecast is 2000 and the forecast error is uh, D1 minus F1, 1600 minus uh, 2000 equals uh, minus 400. Okay, that's our forecast error. So then uh, we can apply the formula for the uh, exponential smoothing and calculate the uh, next forecast F2. So F2 will be based on F1 plus alpha times uh, D1 minus F1. So do we know all these values? Yes, we do. We know F1. We know alpha, alpha is 0.5, F1 is 2000, uh, D1 minus F1 is minus 400. Then we plug in the numbers here. So uh, 2000 plus 0.5 times minus 400 is 1800. So our new, new forecast, F2, is 1800. So let's take a closer look at what just happened here. So we had a forecast of 2000, okay, 2000. Now, uh, the error in this forecast was uh, minus 400. So a negative error tells us that we're over forecasting. Our forecast is too high. Was it really too high? Yes, it was too high because the actual is 1600 and our forecast was 2000, which was higher. So we were over forecasting. As a result, the uh, error turned out to be negative. And um, this error term was used to correct the forecast by lowering it. Okay. So the forecast went from 2000 to 1800. So the, the forecast decreased. Why did it decrease? Because it was too high. The error told us that our forecast was too high. And when we applied the formula, our forecast decreased. And we corrected our forecast by the forecast error. So now we went from F1 to F2. 
So let's see what happened in F2. In F2, our demand was 2,200. And as a result, our forecast uh, D2 minus F2, 2,200 minus 1,800 is 400. Now we have a positive number. So that means we are under forecasting. So let's check. So the actual is 2,200. Forecast is 1,800, which is lower. So we're under forecasting. And as a result, we have a positive forecast error, 400. So what's going to happen, the formula is going to apply this correction. And our forecast is supposed to, our forecast should increase because our forecast is currently too low. And the formula should correct that by increasing the forecast. So let's look at that. So F3, so F3 equals F2 plus our correction factor alpha times the error term. So 1800 plus 0.5 times 400 equals 2000. Now, what just happened here? Our forecast went from 1800 to 2000 our forecast increased okay so so uh, again we see that if the forecast is too low the exponential smoothing formula increases the forecast to compensate for that okay so let's erase this so let's look at the forecast error in period uh, three the forecast error Okay, the actual is 2,000. The forecast is 2,000. Okay, 2,000 minus 2,000 is uh, zero. Okay, so we're, we're spot on. Okay, our forecast error is zero. Uh, so we have a very good forecast. Now, let me ask you, should we keep on updating the forecast or should we just stop here and not touch the forecast at all? Okay. I mean, we've updated the forecast in the first period, in the second period. Now we're, we're spot on. Should we mess with the forecast? Now, the answer to this question is uh, it doesn't matter because the formula does not change the forecast when the forecast error is zero. So let's take a look at that. So for F4, the forecast is F3 plus alpha times the error. So uh, F3 was 2000 and the associated forecast error was zero. So 2000 plus 0.5 times zero is still 2000. And for practice, you can continue uh, calculating the uh, next forecast periods. Now, one, one question you might have is, how do you choose the initial forecast? Uh, and what happens if your initial forecast is really, really bad? In practice, the initial forecast does not matter. Why? Because uh, as you forecast several periods, okay, after let's say five, six periods or so, uh, the impact of the initial forecast decreases exponentially. Okay, so uh, here's a uh, explanation of this in terms of uh, uh, formulas. Okay, and um, um, and here's it graphically. Depending on the alpha that you choose, the um, weight of the initial forecast F1 decreases exponentially. So let's say after uh, 9, 10 uh, uh, periods, uh, your, your initial forecast will have a very, very small 
uh, intact. So even if it's not the best initial forecast, uh, you should be fine. Okay. So let's move on to the next slide here. So simple exponential smoothing assumes that there's a uh, constant level, which does not change over time. Uh, there is no trend and there is no seasonality. Okay. So let's suppose we have forecasted FT plus one. So this is our forecast for FT plus one. And what's our forecast going to be uh, for T plus two, T plus three, T plus four? It's all going to be FT plus one because we assume there's a constant level that does not change over time. Okay, so if T plus two will be equal to FT plus one, FT plus three, three periods ahead, T plus two, T plus one, uh, four periods ahead, T plus four, FT plus one, okay? So uh, whatever is the most recent updated forecast is going to be the forecast for uh, all the uh, future periods. So let's move on to double exponential smoothing. Uh, what's the difference between simple and double exponential smoothing? Um, in simple exponential smoothing, we don't have trend or seasonality. However, uh, in double exponential smoothing, we have level and trend, but no seasonality. So if you look at your data and you see an upward or downward trend, then you need to use double exponential smoothing. Okay. Uh, so double exponential smoothing, uh, I just, uh, okay, uh, remember, let's, let's do this in Excel. Let's, let's go back to Excel and let's see how we implement simple exponential smoothing. Okay, so uh, let's go to over here. Uh, let me magnify this. Uh, zoom 200. Okay, so here we have uh, exponential smoothing. Okay, our alpha is uh, 0.4 for right now. And we have our uh, periods years from 1991, 92, etc. These are our actual sales. And these are our forecasts. Okay, so we're doing simple exponential smoothing right now. So uh, the first forecast 1800 is given. And so uh, for the second period, 1991, how do we calculate this forecast? Okay, so from 1800 to uh, 1810, how do we increase? So let's look at the uh, actual. Actual is 1826, and our forecast is 1800. So we are under forecasting, okay? And we should apply the formula now, and the formula should uh, bring up our forecast because right now our forecast is uh, too low. 1800 is too low. So what are we going to do? We are going to calculate the forecast error. So the forecast error is uh, actual 1826 minus 1800 and that is 26. Okay, so the forecast error is 26. So to calculate the second period's forecast, we're going to take 1800 plus 0.4, which is our alpha, times 26. Okay, so uh, first period, 1800 plus, we're adding the correction factor, 0.4 times 26, gives us 1810. There could be some uh, rounding error, but 1810, okay? So that's our next forecast. 
So let's say, let's look at the actual. The actual is 2001. And our forecast is 1810. So we're still under forecasting. We need to uh, bring up the forecast using the formula. So let's calculate the forecast error. 2001 minus 1810. Our forecast error is uh, 191, which is positive, which indicates we're under forecasting. And for the following forecast, we go to the previous forecast, 1810, plus 0.4 times 191. Okay? And that gives us 18, 1887. Okay? So we look at the actual 1703 versus 1887. So here we're over forecasting. Our forecast is higher. So let's look at the forecast error, 1703 minus 1887. So now we have a negative error because we're over forecasting and so on and so forth. Okay. So um, if you want to uh, uh, practice, you can try to reproduce these numbers. Let's see what happens when we increase and decrease alpha. So we said alpha is uh, the smoothing constant. When alpha approaches 1, we correct the forecast uh, more and more. And when alpha approaches 0, we correct the forecast less and less. So let's uh, decrease alpha. Let's go from 0.4 to 0.3 to 0.2, to 0.1. So at alpha equal to 0.1, we almost have a straight line. So the forecast is smooth. It does not respond to ups and downs in the uh, in demand. So demand increases and decreases. However, those fluctuations are not reflected in the forecast because we apply a very, very small correction factor, 0.1. Let's increase alpha to 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0 0.9. So here you see a much more responsive forecast. Why? Because we're applying a very high level of uh, correction and the ups and downs in the, the actual demand are reflected to a great degree in the forecast. So our forecast is much more responsive when alpha is high. Now let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation here. Okay, uh, let's continue with the double exponential smoothing here. So in double exponential smoothing, we have two uh, we have two components one is the level and one is uh trend so uh just to give you guys an idea uh let's just uh, scroll forward here so basically uh these small red lines are the levels okay and trend takes you from one level to the next so you start here at this level, you add the trend, and then trend takes you to the next level. And then you add the trend again, it takes you to the next level, and so on and so forth. Okay. So going back here, uh, so uh, Ft plus H. Okay. So we're basically looking H periods into the future. H can be 1, 2, 3, etc. And L sub T is the current level. So we're at level T, L sub T. And then we add to the level trend. Okay. So uh, this trend uh, takes us to the ne next level. And H, okay. So uh, it tells us how many uh, periods into the future we want to go okay 
So uh, this method, uh, double exponential smoothing, is also called trend-adjusted exponential smoothing or uh, linear, uh, holds linear smoothing, okay? So um, the general uh, algorithm is as follows. Uh, so in every period, we observe demand, D sub T. Okay. So uh, based on D sub T, we update uh, the level and then we update the trend okay so we first start with the initial values so uh, we know the uh, level and the trend okay based on that we can calculate the next forecast so basically the next forecast is level plus trend Okay, because trend takes us from one level to the next level. So this is our forecast for the next level. Okay, so we're predicting that we're going to be here. And then we observe actual demand. Okay, when we observe the actual demand, uh, we can calculate the forecast error, uh, dt minus ft, okay? So we have the forecast, and then we observe demand, and then we can calculate the forecast error. Using this forecast error, what we do is we first update the level, okay? So we use a smoothing factor alpha for this. So from L sub T minus one, we go to L sub T, updated level. And then we update the trend and we use a different smoothing factor, beta. Okay, so we go from T sub T minus one to T sub T, okay. And then uh, once we have the updated level and trend, we can calculate the next forecast and then we observe demand, etc. So, uh, here's an example of this. So, uh, L uh, sub t minus 1 and L sub t, uh, t sub t minus 1. These are our initial values for level and trend. Okay. So what's our forecast going to be? Our forecast is the sum of L sub T minus one plus T sub T minus one, okay? So that's how we arrive at this forecast. And then we observe the actual demand. Now the actual demand is a little bit off from the forecast. So we need to update this level, okay? Using the forecast error, we update the new level, okay? And then uh, we uh, update the trend. So we have a new level and new trend, and we add them up to get the next forecast, okay? And then we observe uh, the next demand, okay? And then based on the difference, based on the uh, error, we uh, calculate the new level and the new trend and then the new forecast and so on and so forth, okay? So uh, here are the formulas, okay? So in step one, uh, we start with the initial values, we calculate the forecast and then we observe the actual demand, okay? So then we update the level. How do we update the level? Okay, so the new level, okay, is based on this forecast, okay? So this is the uh, previous forecast, okay? Previous forecast. Plus we add a correction factor and so uh, 
This is the uh, previous forecast. And D sub T minus previous forecast is the forecast error. Okay. So let me choose a different color here. Maybe something like this. Uh, so this whole thing is the error term. Okay. So we thought we were going to be here, but we ended up being here. And the difference is our error term. And we use this error term to correct the previous uh, forecast. Okay. And this is another way of writing the same thing. So once we update the level, we can update uh, the trend, okay? Now, in this case, we use a different smoothing factor, beta, and uh, both alpha and beta are between zero and one. So here, um, uh, we have the previous trend, t minus one. And we want to go from t minus 1 to t, okay? But we need the uh, uh, correction factor for that. So initially, uh, our trend was t sub t minus 1. However, what, we, what happened was we went from l sub t minus 1 to t sub t minus 1. So this is the actual trend, okay? So the actual trend took, took us from L sub T minus one to L sub T, okay? This is the actual, and this is our previous forecast, okay? And the difference here is the error term associated with this uh, previous trend, okay? So, and then uh, we use the smoothing factor beta to update uh, the trend and we obtain T sub T. So, uh, here's an example, okay? Clearly, uh, there's a trend on the, right, uh, on the right half of the slide. So there's this, uh, 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 time series, there's a level and then there's trend. So let's try to forecast this. Uh, on the left, we have the time periods and the actual demand. Uh, at the bottom here, we have alpha and beta. Okay, so what this means is that um, we, um, uh, just for, for the sake of simplicity, I just pick 0.5. So we start with uh, the initial level and the initial trend, and we calculate the forecast. So if we start at 1,500 and uh, we have a trend of 500, uh, we add 1,500 plus 500, we get 2,000, okay? So that's our forecast because we think we're starting at 1500 and we think we're gonna go up by 500 and our prediction, our forecast is to be at 2000, okay? However, uh, the actual demand happens to be 2200. So what do we do? Uh, there is a uh, forecast error, actual minus forecast. There's, this is the forecast error, 200. So using this, we can update the level. So how is, how is this going to work? Uh, this forecast plus alpha times the uh, forecast error. So alpha is 0 0.5. So 2000 plus 0 0.5 times 200, 2100. Okay. So 2000 plus 0.5 times 200, 2,500. This is our updated level. Okay, so 
our initial uh, trend was 500. But how much did we increase from one level to the next? How much did we go up from one level to the next? We went from 1500 to 2100. So the actual increase from one period to the next was 600. Okay, so we need to update this 500. The error between the forecast and the actual is 100. So uh, we're going to start with the previous trend, 500, plus 0.5. So this is beta, 0.5. And this is uh, 600 minus 500. This is the error, okay? Actual 600, forecast 500, and the updated trend uh, is then going to be 550, okay? So we have a new level, updated level 2100. We have an updated trend 550. So level plus trend gives us the new forecast 2650 okay and then we observe demand 2000 and the difference then is uh, the forecast error actual demand 2000 minus forecast 2650 uh, minus 650 this is the uh, uh, error okay so to update the level we start with the previous forecast, 2,650 plus 0.5. This is alpha. And then minus 650, which is the error term. And that gives us the new updated level, 2,325. Okay, here. And then what we can do is, once we have the new level, we can look at how much the level increased. So we went from 2100 to, to um, 2325. So the, this is the actual increase, 225. However, we were expecting an increase of 550. Okay, so there's, a, uh, there's an error there. So to update the trend, we use this formula. We start with the previous trend, 550 plus 0.5 this is beta and we calculate the difference between the actual and the trend actual minus the trend okay and the new trend happens to be 388 okay and then this goes on uh, so uh, so on and so forth um, uh, updated level plus updated trend, you get the uh, new forecast, and then with the new uh, with the demand minus forecast, you get the error, and then with that, you update the level, and then with the level, you update the actual change and trend, etc. So uh, visually, uh, I just want to go over this once again. The exact same numbers. But this is visual. So uh, L1 and T1, 1500 and 500, okay, is 2000. Okay, this is our forecast. And then we observe the actual demand, 2200. So there's, a, there's an error, there's a difference, okay? To calculate uh, the next level, okay? Uh, we use this forecast plus 0.5 times uh, this error term, uh, 2,200 actual minus forecast 2,000. And this is the new updated level. Okay. So our level was 1,500. The next period's level is 2,100. Okay, so now we have updated the level. We went from L1 to L2. Let's look at uh, the trend. Okay, 
So uh, how much did the level actually increase? The level increased by 600. How come? Well, we went from 1500 to 2100. So the actual increase from one period to the next was 600. Okay. However, our uh, initial guess was 500. Okay. So then there's an error. Uh, 600 minus 500. This is the error term here. So we start to update the, the trend for the new trend. We start with the previous trend, which is 500 plus 0.5 times uh, the difference between the actual increase and the previous trend, okay, which is 100. And the updated trend turns out to be 550. Okay, so now we have L2 and T2. Okay. So then we can calculate the new forecast. We start at 2100. We increase by 550. Okay. So then our forecast is 2650. Okay. Then we observe demand. Now demand uh, turns out to be lower than our forecast. So we need to uh, take this uh, error into account and update level L3, okay? So um, we start with our forecast, 2,650 plus 0.5, and we uh, use this error term, actual minus forecast, to find the new updated level 2325 okay this is the new level and with the new level and the previous level we can calculate the actual change in level so we went from 2100 to 2325 so the actual change was 225 and uh, our uh, previous trend was 550, but we only increased by this much. Okay, so so there's a uh, there's an error. Okay, so this is the actual increase minus previous trend. So this is the error term 550 previous trend. And uh, this is our, T3 is our new trend. So we have the new uh, level, L3. We have the new trend, T3. Uh, and then we can calculate the following periods forecast, F4. Okay? So F4 will be L3 plus T3, 2,650. I'm not sure if this is accurate, but uh, uh, you get the point. Okay, I think it's 2,730. Yeah. So this uh, concludes this lecture. I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you.